This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, what a day it has been. I'll talk about it later. I am just exhausted. One thing and another. It, it just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's going to be time for me to go into late retirement. <laughs> because I'm just, I just, all, everything's just starting to get to me. Anyway, you know, and, 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 and what gets to me are things that, well, I have no control over. But what I do have control over is whoever we're going to talk to right now. And you're going to find that out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the week where we dial up somebody and hear his first reaction to us calling. Here we go. It's ringing, it's ringing, it's ringing. I was gonna, you should have seen me at the bar last night, man. I was higher than Hitler's gas bill. <laughs> that's to get the young people into it. That's to get the young people into it. Yeah, nothing like those Hitler ah, yeah, references. The young, people, the young Jews had... Nothing like, nothing like a Hitler reference to get the old, the yeah, young people get, listening. Yeah, I get the old heart pumping in the morning, I tell you. Do you think they even know who Hitler was anymore? Uh, yeah, now they do. <laughs> he's, making, he's, he's usually making a comeback lately, so we got to stop him back into the ground. Well, I mean, they see these Nazis, but they don't even know what that damn Nazi symbol is. Oh, they think it's a pinwheel. It's a fascist pinwheel. Look, it goes around and around with the wind blows. Well, oh, oh, you know what I was always sorry about? I think it was, I can't remember what nation, tribe, I think maybe the Navajo. That was uh-huh. their symbol. Yeah, my friend Charlie Hill, my late comedian friend Charlie Hill was in Oneida, which was actually a division of the Iroquois Indians. And he had a little symbol that looked like a swastika. And yeah. Being Jewish, I understood it. I said it didn't, didn't offend me, so. And Keep the, on wearing it. And the Confederate flag was based on toilet paper. So, you know, uh, wouldn't that be <laughs> Please great? don't squeeze the stars and bars. Yes, Mr. Whipple. I have a way for us to, to really be cool, and that is to put out uh, Confederate uh, flag toilet paper. <laughs> well, every other sheet is, is a Confederate flag, and every other sheet from that is Trump's face. Yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, You'll make millions. What, what are these people in the South going to realize? You fucking lost, okay? They lost. They lost. The statues come down. Yeah, does, I, does the losing team in the World Series get the pennant? No. Does the losing team in the Super Bowl get those cool rings? No. They lost the war. You don't get any statues. Put them in a museum. Yeah, I think we should have, have a big, some, old, I think we should big have. old museum with statues and artifacts and paintings and writings and this and that. And just in a big ass museum, you can call it the big ass Confederate Museum, and everything's there. You want to hear about the South? Want to read about your heroes? They're all in there. I agree. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, take down that statue and put it in a museum. You know, that's all. Don't destroy uh, it. It's a work of art. It, it, it is history. So you put it in a big ass yeah, museum. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want. If, to I, see. if I was a black guy, I'm walking in the town square. I'd want to see some general who would have whipped me. You know. Well, the thing is, the town square, I believe, is located in what was a slave. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, yep. you know, selling area, and uh, yep. uh, it's just it was, it's it's inappropriate. But you know the thing is, here's the thing that bothers me about it. How come somebody waited like how many years <laughs> to, yeah. to grab yeah, forever, about forever. It? You know, it was accepted for years and years. It's just a, you know something in Charlottesville. You go to the park and there's Lee yep. on the statue, and all of a sudden it becomes an issue it wasn't an issue yep. all those years so i say if i say you have like 10 years to complain about it and then if you don't the thing stays up there you go it stays up they had a long like long answer i remember i did a tour of the south in the early 90s uh, mississippi and alabama and i had a really good time but i remember i'd be walking through these little towns and <laughs> you get it. Colonel Beauregard Clayton, who believed every Negro should be whipped. <laughs> so you said these statues like, oh, I, I don't think this should really be here anymore. You know, and Colonel Beauregard is, oh, man. Oh, so I get you to get lost, guys. Stop it. Yeah. Put, take them down. Yeah. You don't see statues of Himmler in Germany. Well, that's you know, what I'm, that's oh. exactly what I'm saying. In fact, 
There in, you go. In, That's my two cents. In, in Germany, you're not allowed to have a statue of Hitler. You're not allowed to have oh, the, no. the swastika displayed. I, I remember oh, no. years ago, I went to Erlingen, uh, Germany, which is right near Nuremberg. And I went into Nuremberg to, you know, just see what the city was like. And uh, as I passed a shop, a memorabilia shop, in the window was like Nazi memorabilia. I mean, like badges and whatever. But they yeah. were all covered, the Nazi uh, symbol, with a piece of tape. Uh, because you uh, aren't allowed to display it. it. Okay? You could sell it, uh, but it had to have tape over it when you were selling uh, it because you couldn't be displaying it. So. That, oh, I'll tell you, in, 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 19, in the 70s, and when I still lived in New York, I, inter- I worked for a rock and roll magazine for a while, and I interviewed Peter Chris from KISS. Remember him, KISS, the drummer? Yeah. And he had an interesting point. He said, in Germany, now you know how the the, the KISS logo looked with the lightning bolts for S's. Yeah. K-I-S-S. And in Germany, when you got a KISS album, those S's were round S's. They were regular S's because they couldn't have the lightning bolts, so they changed the whole logo. So oh. if you bought a KISS album in Germany, it had regular round S's. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, you see, I mean, about you, that? You, you can't do that, you know. Nope, can't and, do that. No and, lightning bolts no more. It is against the law. I mean, I, I just don't believe in destroying these statues. I think they are artifacts. I think they are oh, a p- piece of our past. And they should be yep. displayed somewhere or available for people somewhere. And I think a museum is the best possible place, but yes. not in the middle of in a park. the big-ass Confederate museum. The, museum. Even every southern state can have a big-ass Confederate museum. I mean, you know, put what, them all in there. Think about it. They actually put this statue, I think, in the middle of a slave market. <laughs> Rub salt into the wound. Uh, it, it, let's grab some more grits into the wound there. Uh. You know, and I don't mind if there are Confederate monuments in small towns about here are the people who died from this town in the Confederate yeah. in the Civil War, because sure. you have one for World War One, and you have one for World War Two, and you have one for the Korean War, and you have one for the Vietnam War. God, those are more monuments than you need to have. But most cities you travel through somewhere have a monument to the dead of that city that were yeah. lost in wars. I don't mind that, you know. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't mind that at all. But I, yeah, sure. you know, I just think Robert E. Lee was a loser. He was an insurrectionist. <laughs> he was somebody. He was Jewish, you know. He was his name was Robert E. Leibowitz. It's a known fact. But here's the stupid. Whatever... Here's the stupid part. You got Trump going around saying. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, are we going to start taking out statues of Washington next and Jefferson? There you go. Yeah, no, yeah, we're yeah, not. Where you draw the line, no, so, we're yeah. not because <laughs> they created the very country that Lee was trying to destroy. That's, There's that's a right. difference. That's right. There's a difference. Yes, they that's were sl- right. they were slave owners, but that's the way things were back then. You and I probably, yep. if we lived in the South. And we had any amount of money, probably would have had some slaves, too. It was a matter of the economy. I mean, I would, I would treat them nicely. I would give them, <laughs> I would, give them all instruments. I'd give them decent housing, you know. Uh, sure. Uh, sure I mean, in fact, I would be the kind of slave owner where every other slave would say, boy, you should work for the Bennetts, you know. Uh, they, <laughs> Trade they're, off to the Bennetts, sir. They're okay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, do you know what you I got lots of them working in the house, too, so. You know what really bothered me? When I was a kid, one of my favorite movies was a, a picture called Song of the South by Walt Disney. Oh, I, yeah, sure. Uncle Remus. Try and find a copy of it. You know, you got to go online and find illicit copies of Song of the South. If you want to buy a copy, you can go to uh, Japan. And you they, go to DavidDuke.com. Yeah, no, he probably has it. No, they sell it there, okay? Yeah. Uh, but... The thing is that it was considered uh, somehow racist. I don't know. If you've ever seen the movie, it is anything but racist. Uh-huh. You know? I mean, except I for kid, except for the, sa- you know, except for, you know, Uncle Remus being kind of an old black guy in the South and shuffling a little bit. But yeah. the, the, but there were people like that, you know, and he's a lovable. Yeah, sure. He's a lovable character, and the plot line of the story is that Bobby Driscoll is a kid whose mother and father don't really care that much about him, you know, and he feels uh-huh. alienated from his parents, and he meets up with his uncle Remus, 
who tells him all these fables and stories about Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox and so on and the Briar Patch and so on and so forth. And it's all fake news, you know. It's all fake news. <laughs> Even and, the kid fake news. But he tells these stories, and it makes the kid feel better, you know. And yeah, he, he makes the kid the be drug. able to survive what is a horrible home life. And yeah. uh, it's a beautiful story. It's just a beautiful story. <laughs> and uh, William Bassett, who played Uncle Remus, actually won an honorary Academy Award for that role. He was the first male ever to win an Academy yeah. Award. And yet his work will never ever be seen until Disney finally gets the gumption to say wow. there's nothing racist about this movie fuck all y'all we're releasing yeah. the damn thing was that the only thing he ever did because I know he died in 46 right? you know what, you know what he did like prior that. to that he was a character actor on the Amos and Andy uh -huh. radio shows oh okay and uh -huh. uh, and he also did the voice of Br'er Rabbit, by the way, in that film. Oh, okay. Uh, Counted he, cat. Yeah, but he uh, he was on Amos and Andy, another show that got fucked over because of, yep. of, of white people saying it was racist. If you've ever uh -huh. watched Amos and Andy, there's nothing racist about Amos and Andy. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, Car Charles Gos uh, Gosden and Correll, who created Amos and Andy, played Amos and Andy on radio. But all uh, the other actors on that show were black. Yeah, it was white guys on the radio. It was black guys on TV. It, it, yeah, but I know, well, no, what I happened, know that much. Well, what happened was if Gosden and Correll made some movies, some Amos and Andy movies in which they played Amos and Andy, and they thought they were terrible because it was nothing worse than seeing two white guys wearing blackface. <laughs> so when they went to television, they said, "We're not going to be in it. We're going to produce it. Yeah. We're going to help write it, but we're not going to we're not going to be in it." And they went out and hired yeah. actors who had been working nothing but what they called the the the, the black movie circuit. In other words, they they were uh -huh. actually what they called race films in those days. Oh yeah, and, the Red Party, nineteen forty two. Yeah, and they, they, Harlem goes to uh, goes west. You know. Things oh, like that. Those, yeah. uh, and they were all released in black neighborhoods. And some of them were great pictures. There was one director by the name of, I can't remember his first name, Michaud, who did these dramas that are supposed to be some of the best films ever made. But uh -huh. they're somewhat lost to the ages because Michaud never got recognized because he worked only in what were called race films. And I can't oh, remember, sucks. it was either Amos or Andy, and I can't remember who, I think it was the guy who played Andy, was a director of uh -huh. black films and he then got a job being an actor on Amos and Andy and this gave employment to more black actors I mean those were the first black leads ever in the history of television you know well, and, and yet they were out of work in a couple of years and then the, the, the films were the shows were never shown for a long time and not available for a long time because they were considered to be racist and they weren't in the least you know, yeah. they, they portrayed, yeah. yes, they portrayed Andy as this bumbling black guy. But Amos, but, uh, excuse me, Amos. I'm trying to remember who, who's who. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Andy, Andy was the bumbling black guy. Amos uh -huh. was a, the Sunshine Cab Company. He was a very hardworking black guy. He's a businessman, He's yeah. He's a businessman. And he had a loving yeah, family. Exactly. They did a Christmas show where he tells his kids stories, and it was just a, one of the most beautiful shows ever done on television. And then there were yeah. lawyers in this show. There were doctors. I mean, all the professions were played by, by black guys. They weren't uh -huh. all shuffling and all of that, you know. Uh, and then you had, of course, the Kingfish, who was, I mean, let's face it, it's a comedy, so everything has to be broad. And, and, sure. and the thing, Kingfish... Uh, was uh, was a was a uh, 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 it was always up to some kind of scam, but yeah. but basically the guy. show the show showed the wide breadth of the black community, and somehow it no oh, no it's racist it's terrible that was horrible what we did bye see you later you know yeah, uh, and and so we well, just, we destroy a lot of our culture by our desire to be racially sensitive. You know, and it's always yeah. it's always white people that complain. Yeah. yeah, that's true. 
because uh, so if somebody portrays, I don't mean like an Uncle Tom type, like Stephen Fetcher, but if somebody portrays a dummy or someone slow-witted, if he's black, they'll call it racist. But that, in using that logic, you say, well, the Three Stooges, that might be anti-Semitic because they all played bumbling idiots, and, and they were all Jewish. And they were all Jewish. Well, Luke Costello played an idiot. He was uh, Irish-Italian, so that means all Irish-Italians are idiots. Is that against them? No. Yeah. It's just somebody playing an idiot, yeah. You know? No, and, <laughs> and pretty and, much every comedy show has at least one. And this was a, this was a wonderful thing for black actors, even in radio. Gosden and Carell yeah. said, "We're not going to hire white people to play black people, except us." Yeah, you know. There you go. And um, uh, by the way, in case people don't know, uh, this little thing called Amos and Andy was, in fact, uh, the most popular show. ever ever in the history of radio. Uh, it was a gigantic hit. Wow. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, let's talk, I'll tell you one. Here, here's, here's a name that will make you uh, your skin crawl to a certain extent. Uh, Step and Fetch It. Yep. Now, I think, I've seen him. I think that Step and Fetch It is one of the most vilified comedians in the history of of this country because he invented a character now he was the first uh, guy to invent that character that shuffling slow talking oh, <laughs> slow witted <laughs> black guy. you know the feats don't fail me now school of yeah, acting uh-huh. but he invented the character that was a character he created as a comedic character for actually for the black circuit and yeah. somehow he managed to get in the movies and he started playing this character, which became incredibly popular. Now, if it had ended there, nobody would have said that Step and Fetch it was terrible. They just said he created this very funny comedic character and uh, we enjoy him in all these movies. But because he was successful, a whole raft of black comedians um, came along and started doing uh-huh. the same thing. Yeah. So he is blamed for starting a stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't. He just created the character. It was, I'm trying to remember some of the names of the other actors offhand right now, and then my mind's a blank. It's amazing because I'm remembering all these other names. Uh, but, uh, the, you know, there were tons of actors, and you can go back and watch them, that worked those films. Willie Best was a good example of that. Willie Best from he, Final of Margie. He, yeah, but he was imitating Step and Fetch It. They were all doing <laughs> That's a That's right. They were all doing a Step and Fetch It. And so, well. therefore, he didn't create the stereotype. They perpetuated the stereotype. And uh-huh. and, uh, and and to then say, hey, you know, there are no statues to step and fetch it, and they should be. It was one nope. of the great vaudeville and film comedians. Uh-huh. Uh, Don't forget Burt Williams too. Burt Williams, yeah, you know, yep. Uh, but but step and fetch it. I I saw, you know, he was nothing like that character. I saw a copy of a letter he wrote to the Cotton Club. I think in the twenties or maybe the thirties. First, uh, you know, I. Telling what he would need for a live show he was doing there, and it looked, the letter was like written, looked like it was written by an Oxford graduate. The yeah. grammar was perfect. There was I would be requiring such items for my show. Blah 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 blah. You know, he just he was not he was not that character, folks. No, he created a character, and so yeah. you know, it, it's kind of like guy. if if you and I created a Jewish character, and then everybody else did that Jewish character, they would say, oh, yeah. oh you know, Pearl and Bennett. Remember the team of Pearl and Bennett? They stereotyped Jews. The comedy team of cheap and cheaper. Remember, no, nah, don't spend so much. I am not spending anything. I, uh, <laughs> and everyone hated it. Yeah, their big, their big uh, uh, comedy bit was him saying, "How are you feeling?" and the other one saying, "How should I feel?" Yeah. They were so Jewish. Menachem Begin called them a couple of kikes. But what's, I gotta tell you, what's the old joke about? Uh, one guy says to another guy, "Why are why did Jews always uh, answer a question with a question?" And they said, "Why shouldn't we?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, do we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I want to know, and uh, uh, you as a comedian, uh, you know, let's talk for a second about racial comedy. Yes. You know, uh, is was it such a bad thing, or were they really like, uh, you know, you had people, I'm trying to remember the uh, big big Jewish team back in the old days, uh, uh, F- Shields, uh, uh, oh boy, Fields, and uh, who was the other guy? Um, they were they were a Jewish act, and they were a dialect act. 
Uh-huh. And yet, you know, you go to uh, you be a Jew, you go to see them because they were doing a Jewish act. Sure. Well, there's Yiddish theater, there was Italian theater, there was all, you know, yeah. that. Everyone uh, had their own uh, little thing there. You know, so, I mean, um, in fact, you know what's interesting about for, for black people? I talked to somebody who was black once. No, I've talked. Uh-huh. I talked to a black person uh, recently. Really? It was, I, I met a I, yes. I met a Negro once. I found him to be quite or, a gay. Or I saw him on. I tel- rubbed his head and had good luck all day long. All I saw, I saw was maybe maybe I saw him on television saying this, but he said there was a time when he was growing up where if there was a black person on television, the there, the parents would call the kids into the room and say, "Look, there's one of us on television." Yeah. Uh, and and so. Why do we then vilify Amos and Andy? I mean, that was a show that black people could watch and have yeah. a good laugh and so on. And nobody ever really... I think it was the NAACP that finally complained and and it, CBS took it out of syndication. It only lasted like two years on the air. But in yeah. syndication, it kept going. And um, the NAACP uh, called them on the carpet and said, you got to take that off. Now, this okay. is an organization that's called the National Association for the Advancement of oh, Colored yeah. People. Oh, yeah. I always wondered about that. <laughs> you know, it changed in the 60s. I mean, if you're going to pull down <laughs> Lee's statue, I think you also should t- change the name of the NAACP. I mean... Colored people. Colored Jesus people. Jesus Christ. This is the last time you heard that term. <laughs> well, the last time I heard that term was, uh, I, I think, when a black person just left the room. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I heard it, I was in the first grade, and a friend of mine in my class said, hey, we got a new colored lady working for us. And I never heard that term. I'm in the first grade. I thought it was a lady who was all different colors, like flashing like the other lights. Well, so you, I, got it, I want to see the colored lady. And I went to his house afterwards, and there was a black lady working there. And I said, where's the colored lady? I'm the colored lady, honey. He goes, you're not colored. You're a Negro. Well, I, I, miss, Boy, was I, I misused the term a while back because I was talking with a black guy, and I was talk. I, I meant. I meant to, what I was trying to say was all people of color. I mean, that includes Hispanics. That includes you know whatever. And I guess I said colored people. And he went, "What colored people?" And I said, yeah. "No, I'm I'm referring to a whole bunch of people of color." Of color. <laughs> you know, I, and I, I didn't want to have to sit here and go Hispanics, Indians, uh, you know, and, yeah, and sure. give a whole list of who I meant. I was trying to Not say, hockey. you know, that, that it doesn't matter what color you are, um, you, you're up the creek in this country. You know, you, yeah. You got problems. Yep. If you have two legs and walk erect, you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I just. Doesn't matter who you are. I, I don't understand it. But, I mean, I just think that. There was a time when ethnic comedy was a very important kind of comedy in this country. And it, yep. it, and it was because the Jews had their comics and the blacks had their comics. Exactly. Yep. And um, the only thing that I'm bothered by is these race films, some of which I have I have seen, were really some of them just great films. The, the Oscar Micheaux, I think his name, for his name was Oscar, if I'm not mistaken. Was maybe one of it may if he were had been white he would be remembered today as one of the great directors from the past. I mean, yeah. he did these great dramas, these wonderful dramas, and he did do one white film, but it didn't do very well uh-huh. um, because uh-huh. Hollywood said, "Well, this guy's a great director. Let's give him a try," you know. Yeah, and and uh, the film was oh, a well, failure, it, it so was. he was back to black film. Yeah, back to the Negro films, okay. But I can't remember, it was either Amos or Andy, I'm trying to remember the, who, the guy's name, was a major director in in in, in uh, what they called race films. And they had race, race records, too, you remember? Their race re- you know race oh, records. Oh, of course, without a doubt, I got lots of race records. And there were labels just for the races, for the black race, uh-huh. like OK, OK-E-H. OK, OK-E-H, OK yeah. records, right? yeah. And, uh, of course, chess records from Chicago. That was blues. And well, blues ch- blues yeah, but then. chess was uh, chess was trying to appeal though to a white audience as well. Uh-huh. Though I mean, that was one of the breakout labels. But before that, oh you, yeah, when they when they signed Chuck Berry, you know, everybody knew who they were. I mean, you had all these black oh, black groups, and then um, uh, I think RCA even had a you know a label for the black audience. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, so I mean, it, really, that was some pretty terrific, uh, pretty terrific stuff. Hey, listen, do you know we've already run out of time? 
Oh, my God, where does the time go? It just goes zips by when you're old, I tell you. Yeah. Well, we won't see you next week, but maybe we'll see you the week afterwards because uh, next week's a short week. It's a holiday week. and uh, oh, One of those three-and-a-half-day weeks. I can't stand them, those damn metric weeks. The, Canadian weeks. Go away, Canadian weeks. Uh, go away, Canadian weeks. <laughs> go away, Canadian weeks. Go back to Saskatchewan. Hey, we don't want you here. You're not, play, you're not playing anywhere that people can go see you, are you? I got, oh, I'm supposed to be doing a show with Rich Scheidner. It's comedy storytellers and a big comedy show at the Throgmorton Theater, September 28th. Huh. And But it's still, it's it's in pencil right now. It's not in tattoo well, on my forehead. Well, yet, that, but, that's uh, still a long time away. But in That's the meet- a long time away. And then uh, I got nothing but, uh, you know. I'll be handing out uh, Domino's pizza flyers with Pete Best in the parking lot of Kmart this afternoon. And, and Maybe also, you also, and say hello. also remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can see him at your local grocery store shopping. Okay? That's right. Aisle 3, breakfast cereal. I love breakfast cereal. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Thank you. Thank you. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And hello, everybody. Welcome to our fine little show. Hold on a second. I get it. I got it. I, I've been trying to adjust this uh, camera for the for the whole show and for the last uh, ten minutes or so, and I haven't been able to get it the way I wanted it to be. <laughs> but what can I say? There we go. Okay. Is, am, I, am, I, am I perfectly set up? Okay. To the people listening to this audio only, yeah, it's really a radio show. It's just that we put it on on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook Live uh, so that people can see it and enjoy it and, and uh, participate in it that way. It seems to get a bigger audience than, uh, than other things we do. So, eh, what the hell? Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm not my I'm not exactly where I want to be in my in the picture frame. But what the hell? Anyway, so we do it on the Facebook Live, and occasionally, uh, like uh, we'll do a show where we do them on all three or four at once. Uh, but uh, we find the Facebook Live gets us the largest audience, and they're the ones that are worth it. Uh, I'm still dealing with all kinds of, uh, of problems, and I can talk about it once we get some people on the air here who can uh, join me on the citizens panel. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let me see here. Let me turn it on. Uh, what I turn on here, in case you want to know, is a thing called Skype. See? That's Skype right there. Okay? And uh, Skype is... Uh, uh, you can get you, to find out how to get it and all the information on how to use it. Just go to gabnet.net, and on the left-hand side of the page is uh, is is actually a thing that will tell you how to do that. Okay, I don't like the way this is, but I can't get the on the air sign in the in the picture either, uh, and that makes me mad because uh, girlfriend bought me that sign. And uh, if I if I move the can- if I move this like this, you can see it. See, there you go. There's a little bit of the on the air. All right, okay, all right. But then I'm all the way over to one side. Oh, here comes Mike. Yeah. No. Anyway. Hello, Mike. How are you? Um, so anyway, um, you know, you never you have most of the time. You're why don't you get yourself centered in the middle of your picture? You know. Yeah. I'll that, no, that's not even the center. Just take your whatever your camera is and move your camera around a little bit. I, I want everybody. Some people are like down way low, and people are yeah. There we go, and that's uh, that's right there in the in the center of the picture. See, that's the way it should be. That's nice. Yep. 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 Uh, so, how was your day today? Good, smoggy uh, as always. Smoggy. You live where? Sacramento. Sacramento. Sacramento, do I remember it as being smoggy? Not particularly. Well, we got the fires burned up in the foothills. Oh, okay. Well, that would... Yeah, fires up north, one on the coast. That one would... from Yosemite blowing this way, so guess what? Yeah. We all get the smog. Really? Oh, it's bad out there. Hmm. So, anyway. So, anyway, we're waiting for other people to call as well. I, I don't want to be here just with Mike. Um... 
And uh, so our number, uh, if you want to call it, is if you got Skype, is um, uh, GabNet Live. And if you don't have, uh, by the way, tonight's a feel free night. By the way, so you can call up and get a word in edgewise. Uh, Yay! Yeah, and uh, uh, you can get a word in edgewise, and we would love to hear from you. Uh, because I am tired tonight, and I, I, I really, if I had my druthers, I wouldn't be doing a show right now. Hello, Tim. How are you? This is Tim. Tim is so antisocial that he never, we never see him. We never see Tim. Right, Tim? I'm an undercover agent. Yeah. Um, actually, tonight I'm Phil 2.0, so I, I, I do my best to be facetious. Ah! What do you mean? You're going to be you're going to take his position as being a right winger? Yeah, I, in order for me to take his position, I have to be. Uh, I have to put my sarcasm mask on. You know what I did? I went. I made myself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and then things have been so crazy around here. Hello, hello, Rob. Things have been so hello. crazy around here. I didn't get to go get my tea, which I made, which is in the kitchen. So, Rob, <laughs> you take over for a second while I run out and go get my tea. Okay. Okay. Go what ahead. kind of tea? What kind of tea, Alex? Be careful. Yeah, he's uh, he's gone. So we'll hey, have to Rob. ask him when he gets back. Yes. You should have your own show. You're good. <laughs> you know, I used to have a show on GabNet. Oh, that's back good. back oh. in I think 2014. I did a I did the nine to ten o'clock show. Do you do you guys remember Albert and Albert's Public House? No. Okay, so they were, his engineer. The guy is a uh, producer and engineer from Sirius, Albert Reynoso, started on GabNet with him. When he left GabNet, I took over that show for for oh a few months, and then it was just too much of a commitment working full time. So, Sirius is free for another next week or so. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I have Sirius. I, I, I'm a sales guy, so I'm in the car a lot, and so that's the one luxury. Because if you don't have I travel all up and down the state of Virginia and Maryland, and if I don't have Sirius, there's no radio in the car. So, now, and we lost. You, you live in you live in Virginia. I live in Virginia. Yeah, we we lost I, a Sirius alumna alumnus today. You heard yeah, about that? I saw that? that. I saw that. It's very sad. Jay Thomas passed away. Yeah, cussed a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I remember him from his days in New York at 99X. That's where I first heard him, and and uh, then he went on to Mork and Mindy. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Jake has a wave of cancer today. Yeah. I, yeah, I lived in Columbia, Maryland for a while. Oh, Maryland. that's about 40 minutes from here. During the shooter episode. We lived there during the shooter episode. Uh, wait a minute. Turn down, uh, turn down your sound. Uh, hold on a second. Turn down your sound. Uh, that's me. Yeah, it's always you. You always come on with too much sound. You got a great picture today. It's always me. I blew it. And then on top of it, damn. Goddamn mouse didn't want to work either, so I couldn't get to it to shut it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it shut right. up now. Yeah. So what yeah, were what were we what were we what were we talking about? We were talking about you, Alex. No, we weren't talking about me. Talking about well, you're gone. You don't know what we were talking about. No, I I came back in time to hear when it when it went south. Yeah. No, I I know. We're talking about Jay Thomas. Oh, all. Jay Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's about all I'm going to say. Um, Did you know Jay? I, I didn't well, know Jay. I had to know Jay. He worked in, uh, he worked at, you know, worked at Sirius, and I saw Jay uh, every now and then, you know. And um, I wish I could tell you some nice stories about him, but I can't. So, uh, and not that he wasn't a nice guy. I guess I wouldn't know because he never talked to me. So, you know. Uh, but uh, somebody wrote me today and said, oh, you lost one of the family today. And I went, no, I didn't. I didn't lose one of the family. You know, wh how is he related to me? You know, uh, relatives you hear from every now and then. Yeah, I never talked to him. I don't think we had any. We, we, I don't can't say the number of times we actually sat down and had a conversation. Uh, and you weren't there when he was there, were you, Rob? Uh, I don't know when he started. He started, uh, I think, shortly after I did, maybe a little later. You know. So m I, it, it's possible we overlap, but again, I was there in the evening. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, he had, um, 
He had a uh, what can we call it? A, 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 I won't say a great career. He had a he had a good career. He had a solid, yeah, yeah, I would say so. A fairly solid career, but he never, ever grabbed the big one. You know what I'm saying? He was always a, a co-star in a sitcom. He had one sitcom that was his own that I think lasted 13 weeks, and that was it. Um, a lot of good agency going on there. And then the rest of his life he spent throwing footballs on the Letterman show every Christmas. Yeah, that's right. You and know, telling that some uh, story is a story. The he Lone tells Ranger to, story. Yeah, Letterman yeah. had him tell the story every year, and uh, uh, you know, uh, it it just became part of the tradition for Christmas show was 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 Jay Thomas throwing, trying to knock the meatball off the top of the Christmas tree and tell the Lone Ranger story, and uh, a Darlene Love singing, you know, "Baby, please come home." You know, or whatever that song was, whatever, whatever. Song. He was more of an antagonist instead of a protagonist. What? Was he an antagonist instead of a protagonist? It was. He wasn't anything. He was. He was. If I could describe him, he was fluff. Yeah. Okay. Am I wrong, Rob? I mean, am I being unkind by calling what he did fluff? Uh, I don't know. I you know I don't really. I never can't say I listened to his talk show. I. I I knew him as a DJ, radio uh, music DJ. Mm-hmm. He, he did it a couple of times. In New- Actually, I think three stations I know of. He worked at, at his first station in the late seven, in the mid seventies, ninety nine X, and then he went to. Um, I think he worked at KTU. Mm-hmm. He did mornings at KTU, and then he came back and did jam and oldies. So that that's how I know him. I, I really can't say I listened to his show. I'm serious. Yeah, um, I can't say that I did either. Uh, 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 but the thing is that uh, uh, you but know I liked I mean, him as a DJ. I liked him as a music DJ. I thought he was he was uh, especially a morning show guy. You know, for the times. Um, yeah, you know, but like, as I say, I I, I, I I I would do a tribute to Jay Thomas, except I have nothing to say about him. Uh, you know, I didn't really know him that well, in spite of the fact that we shared uh, uh, some uh, talent between both shows. Uh, his engineer was my engineer, and uh, my uh, woman who answered the phones on the show answered the phones on his show, right? And that was our so crossover. So Albert worked on his show? No, Albert. Albert. Um, no, this was before Albert. In the beginning, did not run the board. Uh, Albert oh, was a okay. producer. He was just a producer, and then uh, what's his name? Uh, Garrett uh, left. Because we, we, we got into a little bit of a row. We made it up afterwards. but uh, And so he went over to the uh, Jay Thomas show and started uh, running, engineering that show. Uh, the reason I, the problem I had with Garrett was is that Garrett was very funny. I loved Garrett. But when he got passionate about something, do you remember this, Patrick? You remember the Garrett days over at my show? When he would get really passionate about something and just go crazy, he would just go manic, and you couldn't stop him, you know. And I'm sitting there going, you know, with signals to stop, slow down, and he he wouldn't. And finally, one time, I just said, you know, we got to get somebody else in here because this is not working out. He's just he's too much of a loose cannon. And he said a couple of things which, eh, you know, weren't exactly. Uh, uh, they got me in trouble. Let me put it that way. Um, and uh, so, consequently, he and I separated. But I mean, you know, we didn't. We we we, we still saw each other all the time, and we weren't uh, doing a. We weren't. We didn't hate each other because of it. Uh, so, that's that story. Um, but. That, you know, I mean, otherwise, I, I I have no association really with Jay Thomas. And no, he isn't part of my family, you know. Uh, so, that's that. Any Anybody else have something to say about him? Uh, you know? No, but how is my microphone? Your, your microphone is still low. You know what happens? It's low when you start. And then as you keep going, it gets to be a normal sound. It gets to be normal. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I went in and I put on with it, and apparently it didn't. There's something compressing it. Don't you feel that, Rob, when you hear it? Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. Did you try uh, those instructions I sent you, Patrick? Yeah, I... Uh... By the way, we don't see a picture on you, Kevin. Yeah, my bandwidth is down. My daughter's playing her game, so I'm going to sit back for a little bit. Oh, okay. Until she gets kicked off. <laughs> Goddamn Minecraft. Mine- Minecraft. Minecraft? I never played yeah, Minecraft. I, she plays I, I that damn game. thing for hours. I had the game from her. Oh, no, it's on. It's online, so i got to kick oh, her off no. the machine. Yeah. I plug the machine somehow. Oh, the machine doesn't work, does it? Yeah. Well, I see. They're smart, though. I I have I've had nothing but troubles today. Uh-oh. Does anybody want to hear my troubles? Well, it doesn't matter whether you want to or not. You're going to. So you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I got to tell you, uh, I just don't have a great deal of love for um, uh, Gmail. Uh, it, it, it's just, it, it's too unwieldy and uh, it's too hard to get it to, you know, to like when somebody writes you, they might get lost in the spam filter, they might get lost someplace else. And you you know, where I'm used to seeing mail come up and see what who's, who's called me, written me that day and, and look at it. So I placed a call to, uh, to my cable company and we bantered around for a while and I had had a deal that they were going to offer me yesterday and I decided what the fuck I'll take it you know I've been playing like 365 a month and they gave me um, a, a deal where it's going to cost me uh, $251 a month okay and I get pretty much everything I have now the same uh, 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 bandwidth and all of that. So that was pretty good, except she said to me, and you have four four HD boxes, right? And I went, no, I have five. And she says, here you have four. I said, well, you know, <laughs> who am I to argue? You know, especially what's nice about Spectrum is I found out that Time Warner was charging us eleven ninety five a box per month. I had six boxes. I was paying sixty bucks a month for boxes. Maybe more than that, um, and and they've lowered the price to six dollars a month. Uh, so that that's a good deal. So anyway, so they give me this deal. And I said ah, I'll take it. What the hell? You know, I said nothing else is going to change, right? They said no. She says you don't need your phone, so we'll, we won't throw the phone in there. You know, blah 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 blah. Uh, and I never use that phone. Never ever do I use that phone. Uh, so, uh, nope. huh? What'd you, somebody say something? I think that was feedback, I think. Oh. It was slap back. Oh. So anyway, so I, uh, I just, uh, I, I just said, well, that's about as, uh, I guess I'll do it. So she said, okay. And do I have your permission? Yes, yes, yes. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, you don't have to do anything, right? Because I, I have in here what we call all, uh, house DVRs where you can, you know, watch any, any two of the DVRs from any of the other HD in the, uh, in the apartment. I assume I can. I haven't looked lately. <laughs> but uh, supposedly you can, you know, uh, I can watch anything that's on another DVR, on the, these two DVRs. I can't, you know, record with them and I can't pause them. They don't do that. But they don't offer that at... Spectrum, the new company. However, however, they said since you already have it in your apartment, there's no need for it to change. Your whole system there has been configured for it, and uh, you will continue to be able to watch whatever you want to watch on whatever set you want to watch it on. <coughs> so I said, okay, that's cool. And um, uh, so we got it all worked out, and they said, you don't need the sports package. I said, well, what's on the sports package? And it was nothing but football and basketball, and I said, nah. I don't need it as long as I get the tennis channels and ESPN. And they said, well, that's in your basic package. So I go, good. We do this whole thing. It takes about 45 minutes to deal with this woman to get, you know, she doesn't know if something can be done, something can't be done, whatever. Finally, we make the deal. All right. Next thing I know, I go into the uh, bedroom and I decide, ah, let me just try the cable in there. 
and it says to activate this cable box. So what they did is they turned that cable box. That's why I had four. They, they, they activated four of them, but they didn't activate the fifth one. <clears throat> All right? So now I have to call them again. And now I got to talk to somebody about the fact that, you know, go ahead, activate it. So she goes, okay, uh, we'll have to put five more dollars on your bill or six dollars more on your bill. I have to fine, do it. She says, uh, uh, okay, let me, uh, let me turn it on, you know. And she's going through all the stuff and everything, and it doesn't turn on. <laughs> it doesn't go. So she says, well, I'll have to turn you over to the tech department. So now I'm turned over to the tech department, and the tech department is letting me listen to music for quite a while, okay? But then finally they come on, and he starts putzing around, and he's going, he's I'm pushing this button, and then I push this button, and then this button, and then, have you got a picture yet? No. Push this button, I'll push this button, and I'll push that button. Is it, no. Why don't you reboot the, the DVR, or the uh, uh, HD box? Well, you know how long it takes for these things to boot up? What, a good 10 minutes, maybe? So I, I go, okay. So they start booting up, and it boots up, and it boots up, and it's taking time, and it's going, it's going to number nine, number eight, number seven, number six, number five, number four. And finally, I, the box comes on, and it says, call this number to activate this box. <laughs> I said, well, something went wrong. Something didn't do it. And he said, well, wait a minute, let me do another few things. And he's, he's pushing buttons in there, I guess. I don't know what he's doing. And uh, I figure, what, what, while, you, while you're doing that, let me just run into the kitchen and make sure that, it all, let me run around to all the TV sets to make sure they're all, you know, the boxes are all working. I go into the kitchen. It goes, in order to activate this set, call blah, blah, blah. So I tell him, I'm on the phone. I said, my, one of my kitchen isn't working. He said, oh, well, let me see what I can do about that. And he's, <laughs> then he's punching buttons again. And it, so anyway, finally, the TV set in the kitchen goes on. I said, I hope you're not charging me for two more boxes. You know, it's only that box I already had working. And he went, no, he says, you're, you're good to go. One more box. And so I said, okay, thank you. And now everything's working. Okay. So now I come back to my computer, uh -oh. and I have an email. A technician will be by tomorrow between 10 and 11 o'clock. <laughs> now, when I talk to this woman, I said, you don't have to come by and turn things on and off or do anything, do you? You know, you're not, you're not going to turn the service off and then back on. She says, no, we're just changing you to a different billing rate, and we're <coughs> taking off your phone, the phone off of it. So I then go, I don't want these guys coming out here, you know. I especially don't like them to see that I've got, you know, their modem hooked up to like five routers all over the place, which I'm allowed to do. I can do anything I want to out of those routers. Right. But uh, I just don't want them here. So I call and I say, I want to cancel. And the woman says, well, I can't cancel it. So why? Well, it, it has to be canceled by the sales department. Because what they're send, sending them out for is to exchange your modem or whatever to do away because you t t you're t getting rid of the phone, so they're going to do something for that. And I said, I'm sorry, but it comes out of the modem, the same modem that the Internet comes out of. I don't want to trade in this modem. I love this modem. I don't know what piece of shit you're going to give me. So uh, she says, well, you're going to have to talk to the sales department. So now, I, it, it's like 20 minutes before I'm supposed to go on the air here, right? And now I'm hearing music again, right? More of that wonderful Awful music too. The spectrum <laughs> music, yeah. I, whatever happened, at least Time Warner was running ads saying, we don't play music anymore, and we pick up immediately. And all. Well, anyway, I'm waiting, and all of a sudden, a guy comes on from the sales department. I tell him what the problem is. I'm getting really hot now because... This is getting very frustrating because this is the third call I've had to place to the cable company in one day to get them to efficiently do something that I should only have to call them once for, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens, uh, uh, he says to me after I explain the situation, well, this is the sales department. I can't turn, stop, a, stop a, a thing, you know, them from coming out to your apartment. 
I said, then who do I talk to? He says, I'll put you on with so-and-so. I said, can you do it fast? Because I have to do a radio program here. And he, he goes, yeah, oh, yeah, we can do it fast. And on comes the music again. <laughs> right? And finally, somebody comes on. I tell him what the problem is. And he says, you got to do this fast. And he said, oh, we can just, I can do that. He says, well, and it, finally he, he did it. And he said, we'll cancel the appointment for tomorrow. You don't need anybody coming out because you don't need any new equipment. It's, it's not an installation of any sort. So, you know, just know that it'll be 24 hours before the phone is turned off uh, and, and, you know, your bill uh, for the phone. However, I noticed that my telephone lights aren't lit up here, so I assume they took off the phone. But who knows what will happen tomorrow, you know, when they, when they finish. Hey, hey, the Alex, I know, I know who you talk to. Who? It sounds like a Sarah Huckabee press conference. <laughs> it, always, it, always, it always has to come back to that with you, right, Tim? I'm sorry. Yeah. I was watching her today. And it left a bad taste yeah, in my yeah. mouth. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 John Rockwell. Yes. Hello. I just I I made calls to Spectrum Time Warner today as well. Yeah. Because twice, in the late mid morning and early afternoon, my modem basically decided to shut off and reboot. I didn't ask it to. It just decided to do it, and it might do it any second. So yeah. you know, whatever. And uh, this has happened before, but it was a good month or so ago. And when I got on, I finally, same thing, you know, you, you have to find the right person. Usually it's the tech department. And the tech person said, what you need to do is you, do you, is the, is the thing, do you have the modem plugged in all the time? I said, yeah. I mean, do I have to turn it like totally off? I thought I would have to reboot and everything. He said, actually, it's probably trying to do that. Unplug it for like 30 seconds or more. Plug it back in and take you, it'll be a few minutes and it'll go through the whole thing. And that should do the trick. Well, it did until today. <laughs> and I, I went, called up again. I thought maybe there was a problem in the neighborhood that, you know, they were, because they were, they've been digging up stuff around here. I'm near the 2nd Avenue subway and 20 other things. And they went, oh, no, we don't see any other problem. Uh, they finally connected me to the tech guy who basically looked, said, well, I'm looking here. And I guess they're looking at my system. He said, it could be your modem or maybe... It, it might be in the lines. We'd have to send a tech person out to your place and check it out. I'm like, well, you know, really? I mean, can I just, just unplug the modem and bring it down to the nearby? We got an office. They got an office, Spectrum Cable, yeah. at 77th and 3rd. It's right down the street. Yeah. You know, just, just replace that first. Let's see if that works. And he's like, yeah, you could do that if you want. You know, But, but we're thinking... So I said, look, let me see if it happens again in the next day or two. Mm -hmm. You know, if it seems to be a repetitive problem. And uh, it hasn't since 4 o'clock, so fingers crossed. But yeah. it was. But the other thing I noticed is that you were talking about, about charges for things. I know the ads that you see all the time say, well, Fios, you know, charges you for your modem. I get, I have a, on my Spectrum bill, it's have 10 bucks a month for that modem. Hello? I thought they said they didn't. I tried about a month ago to see if I, somebody said, call them and see if you can get a better deal. Yeah. And I could, but I would lose because I don't need the sport. I don't watch sports. But, oh, no, you can't just take the sports off. If you take that off, I'm losing stuff like the Science Channel and a few other channels, you know, because it's a different level of something. I happen to like some of those channels. So well, the sports I finally just said, look, they, I they have a sports you know. package that's just sports. It's not Yeah, science. well, I don't know. For some reason or another... My, you know, my package, you know, we won't get into bad jokes about what your package has, but I mean, it's still, it was, you know, whatever. I, I took 20 minutes with this guy. He was very nice about it. And he said, yeah, well, it sounds like we need to, you need to really look through all the different, you know, what channel do you really want to hang on to? Well, whatever I mean, you, happened? You don't need what, the children's what, channels. What, well, I sort of like them. They're fun. You, you know, know, you know they I like watching they, Tom and Jerry occasionally. I'm, you know, they should but, have, they should be forced by law. To have an a la carte system, not this package if, system. If they did, it would cost you more money per month. You wouldn't get they 50 make money cent. on the sport. Yeah, well, you, you know, wouldn't I, get I, fifty cent channels or twenty five cent channels. Think about how many you have, and if you're going to go a la carte, it would. Well, well you know, it, it's kind of like I was saying about Sirius yesterday. I mean, you have it, and it's got you know umpteen thousands of channels or whatever, but how many are you actually going to listen to? You know, and the same thing is true of TV. 
I mean, I one day I decided for the hell of it. I had nothing to do because, as you know, I don't work. And when you're old and not at work, you have to find things to consume your time. And I decided to go through every channel on my cable box. It's interesting. I found shit you wouldn't believe exists. You know, because a lot of amazing. A lot of these stations have sub channels because uh, when they went digital. They have more than one channel, and they can have two or three channels, four channels. And a lot of those show up somewhere in that constellation. But why are they there? Who the fuck needs them? Can't I say, just give me this, 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 and this, right? No, you can't. You're going to get all this garbage. Well, aren't you bound? Aren't you, aren't, isn't the cable company bound by their contracts with the local? stations in your market to provide to provide all of the people if they're if they're paying their you know their fee that it would be if they've got three channels you're going to see them yep yep and uh, anyway well, the regular channels why not you know we, i mean we, i want C- cbs and nbc you we know, have a but, channel where you can see all the streets in new york city in rapid succession you know that one right like channel oh, yeah, 75 well, that's the, yeah, the traffic cams the traffic which, cams they're impossible to. You see the traffic, and they used to have. They used to have a caption as to what street it's on. Now you can't see half of them. Right. You and have they no look, idea unless you happen to looks, be really looks, good at, at looks, spotting things from the air. It looks pretty go, good during oh, the summer. Oh, that's the West Side Highway, I think. It, look, it, it looks pretty good help. during the summer, but during the winter, it's like all the lenses are fogged up, and you know. It's, when it rains, it's all you know foggy. You can't you know. And then, so then they, they, when they when they when it doesn't when it, when you can't see them. Then they run a running uh, pre-recorded thing showing you all the various city council districts and who your council man or woman is. That's really exciting. <laughs> you know? uh, I've watched. I've watched that. That's how bored I've been. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you, um, <laughs> there, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing what's what's there, hmm. and it's a lot of nothing. Uh, the old, the old, the, I like the old game show channels. Well, you though. know what they What's, have? Remember, they we were on public access, as you buzzer. may remember. Yeah. Oh, access. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harold Hudson Channer is still still running, whether he's dead or not. I don't know. Yeah. That was a guy you, who did interviews, but even but, back but in the seventies. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. They have these these public access channels, and they are all, they don't take up the full screen. Mm-hmm. It's like they're, they're just like. There's no such thing as high def wide screen on the public access channels. Yeah. Squash it down. Like old TV. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit like it's a little bit well, little but, small in it. But a lot of these people a terrible. lot of these people have shot the stuff wide. Why don't they play it that way? Why why don't they fill up the screen with it? It's like you're you're getting this for free. We're not gonna give you the full we're not gonna give you the full screen. I bet it's because of bandwidth on the cable that they that they use the bandwidth for the paying customers, you know. Pay per view. Wow. All the all the high depth that they're feeding on that cable. It's like it's like serious. The talk channels sound like dog shit because they compress the crap out of them so they can give full spectrum to the music channels. And even there, I don't think full spectrum. They still sound tinny. At, the yeah. music channels aren't. Yeah. But. You know, uh, it, they only have so much bandwidth that they can use, and so they squeeze those down to nothing. And so that's anyway, why I, I, I took care of my. Uh, I, I've taken care of my changing my email address, so I sent a letter out to everybody again. Maybe you got one, got Patrick, it. and you got one saying, yeah, "Well, it. I'm back to you know a Benedict." Uh, and, and I changed it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the other one will work. I mean, the other one people can use and get a hold of me as well. Um, but uh, it, it, uh, then I had to go back to all the things that I had changed the address on, like Hulu and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. which was, was driving me a little batty. But then but what not re- Microsoft, right? <laughs> but what really has driven me crazy today, and I can't figure it out for the life of me, because for the longest time on Outlook, I was able to take my Apple Mail and run it on Outlook, you know. And I tried configuring it, and it's, it's not coming through. It comes through on my Apple Mail app. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. On, on the other hand, gabnet.net, my mail for gabnet.net, doesn't go to the Apple app. Mm. I can't make it work. It doesn't, in both, of the, in both cases, that once said, 
doesn't seem to like the um, password I put in, which I know is the right password for for my Apple ID. It's absolutely the right uh, the, the the right uh, 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 what do you call it? password, but it yeah. just rejects it. No, no such password. Blah blah blah. You know, try again. And I'm going. This is crazy. I mean, what, what, how does that happen, Rob? You're, you're the, you're the. You're not getting through. You're not, you're not getting to your. You're not authenticating. That's why. Why, why are you not authenticating? I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to. You know, no, no idea without really getting into troubleshooting it. And quite frankly, I don't even know that I, that I would be able to troubleshoot it without. I would be uh, googling the hell out of it. <laughs> That's my solution. Every I find every answer in the world on Google. Yeah, they ever shut off Google? That's oh, it. My, I'm, my life is over. Oh my god! <laughs> really? oh, yeah. Boy, this is this is terrible. Was, uh, this is terrible. It's it's not. It's also not doing uh, my mail for uh, one of my accounts. Another account. This is really ridiculous. It's, it's amazing. Just amazing. Uh, so I mean I just I you know I've had it with the email thing. I'm just gonna say I'll go over to my Apple Mail to look at my my cloud mail, you know my I uh, Apple Mail, and I'll I'll go over here to go get the rest of the stuff. Uh, yeah, another another thirty seconds. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, and you know what I've just noticed? My picture has frozen. Uh, not a, not with me. No, 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 my, no, 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 let me show you. Let me show you here. If, if I if I do this, it's frozen. So everything's gone wrong today. It's just wonderful. This is terrific. Oh, good. Well, I've uh, actually had a good day today for yeah, a change. Talk with each other while I <laughs> All this work I've been doing is finally going to pay off. Uh, hopefully over the weekend with a nice big check. Hooray! So I'm I'm feeling good oh, really? <laughs> for a change. Here. Hey, Rob, and my I landlord got, will be very happy. <laughs> you know, I got a happy. call from our cable company, which I don't have anymore. It says, Mr. Allen, you still owe us $215 for our box. It says, listen, I don't even have your box. Oh, yes, we do. You still have the box. I go, I don't have the box. I sent it back to you years ago. Well, I don't know what's going on. Says, you better check your records. Somebody screwed up your records. Goodbye. Exactly. Well, they should be able to see the. I mean, they're te they can they can see if the box is on or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. I had Com a problem with the box Com one time, and they re they rebooted it for me. You know, I mean. Well, Comcast. I mean, me and Comcast don't get along. Period. Oh, Comcast. Okay. <laughs> I call it, I call it Comcast. Right. Well, I I'll believe it. I, I mean, call this I call this speculum cable myself. But, you know. Well, with uh, 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 Comcast, though, so mm -hmm. I asked him. When is the cable going to come back on? Well, it might be in two to three days. I go, do we get we get a little bit of money back from that? No. You should. You should. No, Comcast says no. Well, look at me. See, I'm moving again. <laughs> hey. I, I, the plug, unplug, and then boot and reboot. Oh, man. Is that, can anything <laughs> else go wrong? Well, let's not and, and, be surprised. And, and, What's the issue? And and and, and uh, my my good friend uh, 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 Jack Bishop. I have to keep remembering the name because I know him by another name, which shall not be spoken. Uh, and um, he always likes to give me a bad time because uh, when I have troubles, uh, he says, "Well, see, I I have troubles, and you give me a bad time." No, he has troubles because. He doesn't know what he's doing. I have troubles because I do know what I'm doing and then try and push the envelope. You know? Three, two, one, right. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's still got an hour. You know. <laughs> he'll, it, he'll show is up. a hurricane headed toward Jack and Amy? I have no idea. They're far enough, I think they're far enough inland. Yeah, they're they're not anywhere near that. Uh, well, where, I can't remember where Amy is, though. I know Jack's closer well, to the Amy, Dallas area, right? So no, they're but both, it, of they're the both up area. near Dallas. Both the Dallas area. Yeah. Now, I mean, they, they may get some rain. Now, my sister and one of her sons, and that's two-thirds of my Mia family, are in Houston. 
and are battening down the hatches. They have dealt with floods before there, this, so they are. You know, I don't feel too bad, but my fingers are crossed because yeah. they are. You know, they're they're far enough up. But Houston is a very low lying, flat city. People forget it's known as the Bayou City because it's literally on a bayou. No, I used, to, I, used to, I used to live in Houston. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, they're down just sort of south of south of Midtown. Houston could I think get that's the arts it. district. Houston could get it. You know. Yeah. Well, they'll get they'll get way. I mean, they'll. There'll be a there'll be a flooded basement or two in uh, in one of them, even my sister my nephew's place. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, they've they've dealt with, you know, the last few years. I mean, they've been there for eight ten years, so they they know that they know the routine. Uh, in fact, when my when my when my uh, nephew was a class of of 08 at Rice University, mm-hmm. there was a flood, and all the students went went body surfing down the street. You know. <laughs> And my sister's like, "Oh my God, don't tell me this, Steve. Please don't tell me you were, you were, you know, you were, you, you were floating down the street." Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, they, they'll yeah. make do. They'll stay indoors and 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 right. they're on the se- stay on the second floor, and hopefully they'll be okay. The will see it, uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow sometime. Yeah, and it's going to hang out. That's the problem. It's it's. Yeah. I mean, another funny category three, so it's going to be bad on the, on Galveston and all that, but. Once it gets in, it's going to take a while to leave, which means lots of rain. Well, I was going to say, what would what would if, what would it do to uh, his fence if he put it up? And um, I suddenly realized that one actually, when you, if you're going to build a fence across the border, by the time you get to that area, you've got the Gulf of Mexico, and you really don't have to worry about people, you know, climbing a fence or whatever. You don't have to put up a fence there. Just need some rowboats, you know. Sw- well, there already is <laughs> a lot of there it. already is a lot of fence there anyway. Oh yeah. You know, it's to keep us in. However, that's the problem. Uh, so I don't know. You know, well, I, mean, well, I had a bad day too. D- did you? Well, how'd you have a bad day today? Well, uh, we lo- we live in a small town an hour north of we're two hours north of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, our, the big city center is Saginaw Midland area where Dow Chemical is. Yeah. Uh, Dow Chemical, they shut down the penny store uh, a, a few weeks ago. They shut down the Best Buy a month ago. I was in Bay City, the next town over. Today they got word they're shutting down the Kmart, which is it's 50, it's 45 miles away from us. Our town has only a Walmart and a Kmart. Kmart closes in a week. Mm. Uh, there's jobs are disappearing like uh, it's it's crazy. Now you're where again? Uh if you if you hold your hand up mm-hmm. and figure Detroit's at the bottom of your thumb almost to mm-hmm. the left of it, oh, yeah, we're yeah. about halfway up the, the the middle of your hand. Oh, okay. In the center of Michigan, uh, in in, in a, a rural area, beautiful state parks and everything, uh, clean water, clean air, eagles, and all that kind of stuff. But about an hour away, Dow Chemical, where we go for our medical uh, doctors, because they have really good doctors there. Uh, We've lost a Best Buy. We've lost a Pennies. We lost a Kmart a few years ago. We lost a Sears uh, six, eight months bet, ago. Bet you didn't so lose it. Do you have a Costco up there? No, we do not have Costco. All we have is Sam's Club, which yeah. is right next to the Walmart. Yeah. You know, uh, here, Walmart here, is, yeah. I think what did is Walmart is, is now partnering with. Uh, now, well, this is what I was going br- to bring this up. Uh, I heard this story yesterday that, of course, Walmart is going to be. Um, partnering with Google to try and give Amazon competition. Yeah, Walmart has a very strong online presence. Yeah, we but... We buy a lot of our stuff but, off of Walmart. But, but the thing is, as I heard this story, I simply went, you guys are in for a big surprise. Because... Well, what the, I don't think they can hurt Amazon. All right? Amazon is is you know is is always in there to not make a profit. That's the way they've operated over the years. Right, and right. and Walgre- Walmart and Google would like to make a profit. And I don't think they're going to be able to do it. You know. The last the last couple of things I ordered was off Jet. But uh, the one thing they're going to share with Google is Walmart has all the because they're local stores, they have all your shopping habits in their database. They're going to share those shopping habits with Google, so you can talk to Google's robot voice 
And you, if you know the person's uh, shopping patterns, they're going to have something that Amazon has but doesn't have. They're going to know you're shopping from brick stores, which Amazon doesn't have that data. Um, so they're going to have they're going to have shopping habits for people that don't use Amazon. So they might they might have a fight. Well, no, you forget something about Amazon. What did they just buy? Well, they bought Whole, Whole Foods. Foods, and and they asked Sarah Heckabee today, any comment? Nada, nada. Not even, not, nobody's even thinking about it. Well, we I mean, l l here's the thing with uh, Am Amazon has already made a profit and made more money off of buying Whole Foods than the price right. they paid for it just in their stock price going up. Uh, that's the amazing part about it. But more amazing, yeah, more, the, you, you wonder why they're doing it. What, you know, why go into brick and mortar when you've, you cut your teeth on on basically selling online and the reason is is that all these whole foods will become distribution facilities for local neighborhoods Absolutely. so you can order you can order a um, you know a dozen eggs and you can have it delivered that day because it's coming from down the street Absolutely the the the, the big money in grocery used to be a low profit business one to two percent profit margin. It's now a fourteen, fifty percent profit margin because we're all idiots and we can't cook our own food. Well, also then, that we're idiots and we go to Whole Foods and think that well, that's we go to Whole Foods and buy organic stuff. No, no, no. you know, uh, people think that Whole Foods is this place to go and buy food that's good for you. And when I go there, all I see are rows and rows of potato chips and all this shit that's bad for you. Healthier potato chips. Hell, healthier potato yes, chips. Yeah, they're you. veggie potato Organic chips. Organic potato chips. Yeah, they still. If, if if you eat nothing but those, you will turn into a blimp. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, Absolutely. but anyway, the idea of buying these stores and then having an outlet for food uh, is a brilliant move. Google and Walmart are going to have their hat handed to them. You know, I mean, Google's starting to make mistakes like crazy anyway, mostly with the way they handle their people who work for them. But, yeah, but we need some competition in this country because it's just going to... Who's going to buy anything if there's no jobs? The only jobs we have now is UPS, and, and you can be a, work in a sweatshop or a distribution center. That's well, I mean, I, I, you know, I used to give a lot of... Uh, put a lot of money into this economy and buying goods and services... I don't do that anymore because I ain't working. I'm not making a, you know, I mean, making a couple of, you know, a couple of thousand a month off Social Security and my pension from AFTRA. But uh, outside of that, you know, I'm not out spending the big bucks. Well, the big tech guys, and this includes Zuckerberg now, I think it includes Musk, they're all going to start pushing universal basic income so they can funnel some of the money so people have money to buy necessities to keep the, their businesses going. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I think that I yeah, I think that uh, that the the wonderful thing about Amazon is, I mean, I I have been known to buy toothbrushes from Amazon because I'm too lazy to fucking go down to the pharmacy and buy one. <laughs> I do that. I do that. I buy everything from there. I I buy toothpaste. I order like four or five tubes at a time. Toilet paper's cheap. You can get toilet paper. Cheap. Once I bought something, I think it was fifty cents, and they actually shipped it to me. Yeah, I usually buy a bunch of, unless, you know, but I usually buy, for stuff like that, I usually buy four or five of them. You know, how long is toothpaste? A tube right. of toothpaste right. lasts a while, so. Yeah. but I, if like, I, I like to go to the brick and mortar so I can see my neighbors and people who live in my town. Might run I, hate the or I hate them all. I hate them all. I hate them all. Well, I, I'm in a small rural town. I'm in, I'm, I live, I'm in live in Mary, Mayberry, basically. Yeah. And by the way, Kevin's back on I'm with across, us. I'm across the way from Alex, and I like to because I work from home. I like to go out to the little uh, price-wise discount place to get to get you know uh, uh, something uh, to eat. not to eat, but mostly you know uh, shampoo and stuff because it gets me out of the house. You know, you know, Even you and I. You, where, do you, where do you where do you where do you, where do you live? Uh, I live on the Upper East Side, uh, relatively close to. Uh, not that far away from uh, from old Bill de Blasio, actually. Yeah, uh, but where, where do you live, though? A 7th Street. East, east, east what? 
87. 87th. Well, you know, I'm up here at 116th. We should get together know, sometime. We, we will. I keep, I keep, I keep yeah. trying to think of when I'm going to get over. Because I never leave the house it. either, so it'll give us an excuse to leave yeah. the house, unless, of course, one of us comes over to the other one's house. You know, oh, uh, in no, which but case, this is the, you're seeing. You're not seeing below here where all the mess is. <laughs> yeah, well, then you can come over here because all the boxes this is from my old studio. Are all lining everything. And, this place, you know, it, I, this place is not that dirty because my girlfriend is such an <laughs> anal compulsive human being. Great, send her over. <laughs> you know, I could use that. everything has that's to be in the right place. I have whose wife is a uh, is is like a decluttering <clears throat> person. Listen, He's, he I, came here once. He said. I've got to have my wife call you. I'm like, nah, well, that's nice, but I can't. I, can't make, I, I make the beds every, my bed every day. I, I didn't used to make my bed every day. You know, I made it when, oh, I don't know, I was having a woman over and I wanted to look like I was neat. You know, uh, <laughs> I need to clean, I need to clean the sheets pretty soon. You know, it's been what, three weeks? No. <laughs> but we Did go anybody to. See the, the, anybody see the sitcom with the psychiatrist who works out of her house? that treats only OCD patients, and when they come over, her therapy is they clean her house. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> that would work. Yeah. Oh, no. I forget which comedy it was. It might be People of Earth. I can't remember which one. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those weird ones. The only thing is, I, I, knew, a, I, I knew a dominatrix once. Uh, she was a friend of mine. And uh, well, she was more than a friend. We had a relationship going. But uh, she was a dominatrix. And uh, she would. She made amazing money, by the way. If you, if anybody wants to turn tricks, don't be a hooker, okay? Because you know people have to go inside you in order for you to get paid. With matrix, with with a, 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 a what do you call it, dominatrix? Yeah. They never touch you, you know. And they pay more money for that than they would for a normal fuck. Okay. Well, the, whip, the whips touch you. That's it. Yeah. So I said to her, I said, w do you ever have any of these guys come over and clean your place as part of their punishment? And she said, I did once, but he did such a terrible job of cleaning the place that I never did it again. I said, because that would be a nice form of having somebody come in and clean up your house. And she, he said. And she, she had to beat him up. She said, no, they want to do a lousy job, so you'll beat them. Right. You know, so. <laughs> God, I've known some juicy people in my time. Yes, Patrick. See, yeah, I, I, uh, I dust every other day. Yeah. Make my bed every day. Clean the bathroom daily. Uh, all of that. I mean, um, I, I don't know why he. You, you, uh, your, your sound keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down. I don't understand. There's something. It, it maybe. Hmm. Is this a mic? Do you use a microphone, uh, Patrick, or is it to the mic that's in the computer? It's, uh, nothing has changed the year that I. Yeah. Well, I don't know you that well. That's why I was just wondering as a tech audio guy. <laughs> well, for instance, where you are, do you have an air conditioner on in the room? No. No. Because something is like pumping the compression up and down. You know, and I yeah, and I have no idea what it is. But I, there's also some ambient noise going on. I hear a kid in the background yelling, and all that, and I think that's causing problems too. That is, that's uh, compressing up. You hear it in the background? Yeah, that's me. I'll, I'll shut my window, but it, it's it's happened every night, and it really hasn't made a difference with Patrick. Yeah, but I mean, just in general, we're hearing a lot of air noise. Yeah. yeah. My window's open, too, but I think I'm sort of blocking it with my body. Okay, so. here, let, let Patrick talk now. What? I don't know. Window's open. I don't know. On. Every, I mean, it, it's silent in here. So. Yeah, and, and after you talk for a while, it starts leveling itself out. It's really, it's very strange. I wish I, I knew what to tell you to do. Maybe because that setting that I had sent you to go look at, it had a uh, checkbox to where it automatically right. increases yeah. and decreases, and if you uncheck that, you can set it to where you want it. Right, that, that's what I did. In the preferences, yeah. Um, yeah, because it, it... it... It could be something with Skype. I'll tell you what I have here. Um, I have Skype on two machines. I have one on my Mac and one on the PC. What I use here is the PC. When I'm using the Mac, 
and you doing a Skype call, my volume goes up and down. I have, you know, I go to, uh, uh, in fact, you might even try this. Go to your, you have a Mac, right? Yeah. Uh, go to your, uh, go to your system preferences and go to the, the volume thing, the speakers, and click that on. What I've found is, at least on my Mac, even if I turn off on Skype that I don't want the volume to change up and down or whatever, it still does it. In other words, the basic volume going out, if you, put out, if you look at input, you'll see that it may, be, it may actually go jump. You see what I'm talking about? That's input. And I... Um and you see you've got like an input level thing on the bottom of Yeah, there it. should be an input control. Well, no, but what you have is the input volume. And do you, do you see that changing at all, moving back and forth and up and down? Um, I see the input volume, yeah, it moves uh, right, left to right. Left and mm -hmm. it yeah. The is it moving on its own at all? Yeah. Oh, well, it shouldn't. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's your problem. Try, try taking that volume switch and just moving it up a little bit and I bet you I bet you you're clearer at least until it starts deciding to go down on its own again there is something that Skype does to that volume switch I just I See? just moved it there you go there you are yeah. there, right. there you are there you go. Better. And so what you should do is always keep that up and when you see it going down to the low end bring it back up you know there's no way to stop that no, I've been I've been trying for months. That's why now when I do my interviews, I do them all on the PC. Uh, so then I'm good. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. you're more That's than like good. That's like the old days there. Yeah. Uh, well, shit. I guess because I've been fucking around in Skype and and so that's actually off the system preference. So I. Yeah, yeah it's well, perfect. <laughs> Then if that fixes, then it fixes. And what you, what you do is just keep it up on your on your screen so that you can see if it goes down or if it starts bouncing around and just bring it back up at least to the middle part so you have a, yeah that's what that's what's been doing it mm -hmm. hey five points for me right yeah, right. yeah. And, and, and by the way if you're listening jack fuck you i fixed a problem <laughs> there i fixed I can't. by the way alex am i uh, my I, I i run through the through my uh, audio program so it, I, uh, there are no input controls on that system preference. I have the input control on the on my input output thing, and I had it too loud recently. And Jack was saying I was shouting too much. Am I okay, volume level wise? You're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. I'm not yeah. as loud as Phil because <laughs> Phil always seems to be louder than well, everyone Phil else. Well, Phil uses a very, just maybe a, him, a very <laughs> good microphone, and it it really does make his sound, even if he turns it down, very very it's present. Good. And I think it's unfair to the rest of you. It's like the bu bully beating you up with his microphone, you know. I could run my stuff through, you know, compressors and I was, nah. Je <laughs> just, Jeff, how's I, the, how? I just how, use a decent mic. How's uh -huh. the cable company up where you are? That's what I was uh -huh. saying. Remember, I just had the great, you know, mm -hmm. I just had my great time. At, well, at least it looks no, like no, the, I'm talking the motor isn't uh, collapsing uh, on me, so that's uh, good. Uh, Jeff, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Yeah. Well, how is this? Going? I'm using uh, Verizon. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, I've been having a problem with my cell phone. Oh, yeah, you told you us see? about that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, every day I go to see a different place. Yeah. And they want to start by the whole system. Well, I first got it tested. And finally, today, they, they said they're going to ship another one for me. Well, uh, a new cell phone. Well, but, well today, not a new one, but a different one. I finally decided I'd go for a cheaper plan. Because they took over the company and then they lowered prices on a lot of stuff. And the reason I did it, I mean, Fios would have given me a huge internet speed and so on. But, um, I, I, you know, the difference isn't going to be that much for me so far as I'm concerned. And uh, I'd like, uh, and they were willing to go somewhat to save money. This way I get to keep my email. This way. I don't get a new modem and a new internet and then maybe have to spend 10 days having it fuck up until I can do some decent programming, you know. There's always that fear. I know what I've got here. And if I don't sneeze and I don't move, it works, you know. But with this... Hey, Alec. What? You notice everybody is getting a chance to talk tonight? Mm hmm Yes. 
because you're both not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One reason. Yes, uh, yes. You have your hand up there. Uh, oh yes, me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but a fire, my a fire story because I I had to change my phone, my landline phone from Verizon because it was on copper wire, and they said we're dumping the copper wire on the whole block. If you want to keep with Verizon, your phone with Verizon, you switch over to Fios. I said, well, yeah, maybe that might be a good idea. I'll have to think about it. I know that we're, we've are we got a Fios, an RCN, and a, and a Spectrum boxes that come down, you know, along the uh, the windows there that I could plug in. And they said, well, we'll send over someone to take a look. You know, maybe we can figure out what to do uh, and whether you, you know, what we can do. And they, they came in and looked at, and they, they, they I, have, I have two windows in my living room. One where the where the where the um, fire escape is, which is actually where the Time Warner one comes down, Spectrum comes down. The other one, which is in the corner over there, that window, mm-hmm. is is where the fire's connection comes down. And there's so much crap around there. I've got this huge sofa, and I've got the the desk that my boss used to have in at the old studio. They said, "Oh, we can't get in there to doing it that unless you move all of that out." Ah. Uh, you, yeah, me and what moving company? You know? yeah. So they can't actually figure out a way to, to open the door, the window. It, I mean, I can open the window; it's open yeah. right now. But they couldn't. They, they didn't want to. They didn't want to touch it. So wow. I said, okay. So I switched my phone over. Yeah, now it's on the uh, modem for uh, Spectrum. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I I don't care. I mean, uh, 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 um, Fios was going to give me a cheaper price about a. Well, that was the thing. It might too. Two hundred and thirty-three dollars. But I've heard about about them that they start adding one thing after another, and before you know it, you know, you're paying a lot of money with them. So, uh, well, a couple of years ago, I was able to go over to the to the Ben Time Warner office, which had just opened down the block here, about yeah. ten blocks down, yeah. and I was able to get things trimmed. I didn't need. You know, I had Cinemax and Showtime from a deal, and they got rid of that. And I was able to get about 50 or 60 bucks off of a 200 and something dollar. Well, also, what, what's, what's happening? And, and that was yeah. two years ago. What's now ha- it's back up. What's happening is Fios has given them uh, a, a, a run for their money, and so they're trying to give everybody a little bang for their buck. And and that's good, you know. Um, well, I'll call them again, because you know, uh, last time, about a month or so, when I called, it was really hard to get... I could get maybe they, twenty they or thirty get, dollars off. Yeah, they started getting. I'd lose some yeah, channels. They, I like. They, they they started getting aggressive with me the minute I said. Uh, uh, I I called them and said I I want to know how do I keep my email if I leave you guys? And they said, Well, why would you want to leave us? I said, Because FiOS is offering me a better deal. And all of a sudden, oh, I, same, I had yeah. asked them before, could they cut the price down? And they couldn't find a cut in price for me. All of a sudden, they're knocking off seventy five bucks off the price. You know. Yes, Patrick. The way I deal with stuff like that, and I just say, connect me with somebody so I can cancel my service. I just start the conversation that way. Mm-hmm. Not then give them an opportunity of why, just say, connect me with somebody who can cancel the service. And then that's when they start asking, how can we keep you? Yeah. It's called the retention department. Well, well, that's I, I, it. I'll yeah, t- that's I'll, what I'll, I got I'll, too. I'll t- I'll t- I, I got the information from the person at the at the the Spectrum office. Yeah. He said, "I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but yeah. here's a phone number. Call them first. They can probably give you a better deal than I can give you here. You know, go to the retention department because we we can't really do that much, and in, in the in the in the branch offices. I thought that was very nice of the guy. You got their retention. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, uh, but, it, but that's, that's a good thing for people to remember. I mean, you can, these people, uh, if, if you've got some kind of competitor, and in the case of Fios, there's a definite competitor out there, uh, they're trying to do everything they can to make things right. But the only thing I found out about Spectrum tonight that, that pissed me off was that how really kind of unknowledgeable they seem to be. They kept pawning me off to somebody who couldn't do anything for me, and he had to pawn me off to somebody else who would. And then when I got to that guy, he couldn't exactly get the stuff turned on, you know. And, I mean, uh, 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 overall, I think I spent three hours on the phone with Spectrum just getting the new system going. 
And you know, so, who knows what yep. mysteries will happen tomorrow? You know, when they when it's well, a that new was building my problem day. with Verizon when I wanted to move my phone. I also because when I left my 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 studio space in Midtown, that phone number I had a business phone number that only yeah. was there. I said, well, let me let me see. Maybe I'll you know get a a multiple phone thing here, a unit yeah. or something, and just have the two lines. And they wouldn't. And the the business Verizon business office wasn't able to figure out how yeah. to move it over to my you know yeah. to to my 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 residential. And the residential didn't know what to do with the business. So what we ended up doing is my and for about 30 bucks a month, I have, if yeah. you call my business number, it just forwards to the residential right. number. I can't even tell if it comes up. And, well, you know, I have a number I'll here. I'll probably kill it the soon. Number, the just, number, I'm nice lo- number. number I'm losing because I don't have a phone here now mm-hmm. uh, is a, a number that the only time it ever rings is it's, it's, w- when, it's it a ro- when it's a robocall. And then it rings yeah, it yeah. onto my cell phone. Uh, and, uh, so, so, you know, I'm going to, in fact, I think that number will still be working. I don't know where I got that number from. Maybe, maybe I got it from the phone co- uh, them. I don't know. Anyway, let, let's talk about something else because we seem to be losing <laughs> audience here. Let me see. How about the audio? Uh, we got losing audience there at all. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Somebody sent me a great list of of famous uh, put downs of people, uh, which could be a good break in between all this stuff. Okay, yeah, well, obviously, well, obviously well, like Churchill well, and stuff like that. But some of these are really, really interesting. Clarence Darrow said once, "I have never killed a man, but I have read many obituaries with great pleasure." <laughs> <laughs> I love stuff like that. Same thing with the funeral. Mark Twain. I didn't attend the funeral, but I sent a nice letter saying I approved of it. <laughs> I love stuff like that. You know, I love these ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, May West said to about some guy his mother should have thrown him away and kept the stork. Uh, That's a good one. So I just love I just love stuff okay, like well, that. Well, yeah, well. the best political one is the Israeli yeah. who is and this is the last one I'll give you, where a member of Parliament said, "Sir, you will either die on the gallows or of some unspeakable disease." That depends, sir," said the Israeli, "whether I embrace your policies or your mistress." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was a good break. Next. Uh, yeah, that's a <laughs> nice break. Trump. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, well, I, but there's much to talk about Trump today. Nothing much no, happened. No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> but I was spent, you know, I, I listened to Jack's show last night, and uh, I, I listened to the seriousness that, like, Amy has, and, and you too, Tim, about, about Trump. And all the more, I began to think that my plan is a great plan. Mm-hmm. And, and and I I have to explain it further so that you you understand how it works. My plan yesterday was this guy has been saying such bad horrible stuff about the press. I mean, just disgusting mm-hmm. horrible stuff about the press that you kind of have to uh, say if you're the press, I don't want to be around this guy. I don't want to have anything to do with this guy. And I keep thinking about the press being like a woman who's being beaten by her husband, but she still loves him, you know? And I think that it's time now for the news people to finally just jump up and say, we're not going to cover you anymore, you know? For the, or at least for the next month, we're not going to report on what you're doing. Now, that doesn't mean they can't report on what's going on in Congress, doesn't mean they can't report on what's going on in other news, which is much more important than this guy holding these stupid rallies, and 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 you're enabling him and ca- helping to cause the riots by publicizing them. Just hey, quit covering ratings. the guy. He you, he doesn't deserve. Hey, don't go to his. Don't go to the press conferences. You know, start boycotting the press conferences. But still report the news. And there's a lot of news out there that's more important than most of the shit we're reporting about Donald Trump. That's and, true. And, and, and I just think that it's, it's time the press said enough of this, you know, belittling of us and pointing the, them out, you know, when they're in the room, those people back there, you know, they don't love America. Fuck you, you asshole. Then we won't even talk about you. Yes, Patrick. And I, 
I listened to that too, and I thought Jack made a good point when he said when he'd done with the show, he liked to go and sit in front of the TV and just chill the fuck out and not worry about it. And you know what? That's what I've been doing since January 20th. I don't really pay attention to a whole lot of this shit because you know what? I can't change anything until the next election cycle. And there's no need for me to get it wrapped up and just relax. You know, I may go. I may go back to my old thing about boycotting Trump by just not watching the news again. That you know, know. that that when um, when I've I turn. Got two points, Alex. When you're done. Well, the, the point is that I have here is that we constantly hear about this guy every single day. He monopolizes. He, he monopolizes the news. He monopolizes the conversation. And if you look at what he's monopolizing it with. It's not worth even reporting. Mm -hmm. you, you seem to agree, Jeff. Yeah, his first response is, I've done this fantastically wonderful thing. And, and everybody says, well, what did you do? He didn't do anything. But he talks about it. Yeah, but also, if you don't mention him, he will start going nuts. You know? Because the baby cries louder when nobody pays attention to him if he's a badly raised baby. Yes, Pat, uh, uh, Rob, and then to Jeff, uh, to uh, Tim. So my comment or my question to you: How do you? How would two weeks ago we have this big uproar in Charlottesville? How do you not? How do you? How do you avoid the president there? Well, you can avoid the president there because you're reporting the story. The story is still a story with or without Trump, you know. And what went on there, and the fact that somebody was killed as a result of it, and the whole thing is well worthy of reporting as news. So what you're saying is that if Trump makes a statement, nobody should cover the statement. That's correct. You know, well, well, no, but no, no, but you see, you're only upset by that because you know the statement. If you didn't hear about it, you know, he would not make that. I, I bet you a dollar to a donut that he would not have made that statement had he not known the press would report it. I, I disagree. I think he, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I disagree, too. Why do you disagree? I, I got two points, Rob. Go ahead. My two points. Why, why do you disagree, not, Tim? Because you, the, all, the re, all the rest of your day will be for naught? When he, no, he's communicating with his base, and he's not, if he's like Bill Cosby, a celebrity, ignore him. He is the president. He is, works for us, and it's like uh, if you're uh, yeah, in a car. And Tim, that's all bullshit, because the bottom line of what I'm saying here is the press has become the enabler. I don't think so. I think he would talk to his base anyway. He wouldn't like be able to wait He wouldn't with be him driving. Uh, uh, he's impaired. You got to talk about. He wouldn't be able. He, he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't be able to talk to his base if you weren't giving him the microphone. No, he's got. He's got Fox Twitter. News. He's, he's got. got he's news. got Twitter. How many of these people do you think his unwashed masses really know how to use Twitter? No, no, but they watch Fox News twenty four hours. Do you know a day? who reads Twitter more than his base? The people that hate him, that want to get their, they want to get their 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 juices going, they want to get uh, agitated and irritated at the man. I don't think his base knows how to fucking read or use a toothbrush. Yes, Patrick. I I really believe a lot of, a lot of the left, they just love bathing themselves in whatever negativity that Trump puts out. Yes. So that have a reason to bitch. I really believe that it's the same as what the Republican did during the eight years with Obama. It's every negative thing that he did, and there weren't that many, but like Benghazi. How many years did we hear about Benghazi? And it was brought up constantly. And I really believe that the left loves every negative thing, so they have something to bitch about. The same as the Republican. Because otherwise it'd be pretty boring life. Well, it became a, it becomes a parlor it becomes a parlor game. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I would agree with you if it were Obama and Bush or uh, Kennedy and Nixon. We're talking about something unprecedented here. And You're for me, about Hitler. You're talking for, about for Hitler, me, Rob. 
Yeah, for me, I I have a fear of this man. Don't and like what it, he please. Do. Don't, don't liken him to Hitler, Tim. Please don't do well, that okay, because well, I think be, I happen to think Hitler was probably a better person than Trump. No, 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 no I don't want to liken him to Hitler. But we have to, if we don't stand up now, nobody's going to protect us. Did you hear about the court case where the the, the Department of Justice? is now going to have access to everybody that visited an anti-Trump yeah, website yeah, and last and it doesn't year. and it doesn't mean shit to a tree, Tim. It's not going to do not anything. Till they, not till they come no, after you. The your way the way work. we're going to put a strike we're going to strike a blow to this guy if we just don't talk about him. I, 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 don't think I just work. don't think you could do it. Yes, I don't well, think you Kevin, could do it. you had your hand up. <laughs> Kevin? Yeah. You had your hand you up. <laughs> you're doing a semaphore. Yes, I, uh, I, I just liken it to uh, my wife was saying tonight because I just came in here and turned on CNN or Fox or whatever I got on there. And she goes, she says, you've been, you've been watching a lot of this shit lately. And I said, yeah. And I said, you know, my 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 guilt in this whole thing is that I love a fucking train wreck. Can you move your camera down a little bit so we can see all of your face? There we and go. And this is a train wreck waiting to happen. Yeah, there the you go. Rubberneckers. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's, you know, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. Um, Real presidents uh, of Washington. Well, huh? I, I may go back to not watching the news again because it, all they're doing is stirring up the pot and then they're, and then on top of that, they're enabling Trump. They're, they're, and you're right. Exactly. You're right. You are 100% right, but I don't think in this case your plan would succeed because, well, first of all, it can never happen because you're never going to get, like like Tim said, you're never going to get Fox to stop. And so then you're only going to get certain news reported. Yep. And and it isn't Fox who's talking about this man not being fit to be president. Uh, and, and, yeah. and, and the more you hear about that, the better I feel. Because the more people on his side of the aisle are going to turn against him, so we could get him the hell out of there. Well, all, 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 all I know is I get very, I get very upset when I hear him talking about the press and the way he does, and the fact that one of these days, at one of these rallies, one of these members of the press are going to get hurt by one of his people. Because he talks so pejoratively of them, and to say that they are they they don't love America, that was the latest thing he said. Uh, People don't believe that hey, shit. Hey, if you're going to say that kind of shit about me, why should I cover you? Why should I even give you a, a microphone? Got to give him even a harder time. Well, no, but you give him a hard time, and he loves it because he well, just see, that's, what, that's in what they've it. been doing from the beginning is poking the bear. Yeah, uh, he's losing. He, Patrick, Did you hear what oh, Kevin yeah, said? Wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, but he keeps doing it. What, Tim? You know what Kellyanne said today? Oh, Journalists Tim. should be forced to write good stories about the president. <laughs> oh, bull crap! I don't give a shit what Kellyanne says. Anyway, uh, Patrick's got his hand up. Said the same Patrick's thing got his hand up, and we can actually hear him now. I just want to know seriously: Does anybody really believe? That if he were to get impeached, he would actually get thrown out of office. Because I was listening no. last night, and um, it seemed like everybody was convinced that uh, Pelosi is going to be the next president. Well, who, are you, who, who are you listening to? That was that was that? That, oh. that was going on on God, the intersection. Please. Yeah, yeah, that was on the intersection. Yeah, I heard that, and they Pelosi is going to be the next. Yeah, no. In How does that happen? Once the Democrats take over the I know Senate, Kev, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Brian isn't here tonight, the, but let me call her Nan, Nancy Below Me. Uh, yeah, it's just going to happen. I can't imagine that it's going to happen. Look. I listen to Amy and I go, I, I just want to, I don't choke her by the throat or something because I, she's always saying, and then if that happens and this happens and Nancy Pelosi will be president of the United States. And I'm going in what dream world in what <laughs> just science fiction story is this going to come to pass? You're, you're not going to number one, you're not going to impeach uh, Trump. It takes a long time. It took them two whole uh, terms to get to to uh, to get to Clinton. Uh, you know, it, it, you just you don't just say, "Oh, we're going to impeach him." No, you're not going to have. Didn't have to leave either. 
Clinton didn't have people like Clapper coming out and saying that they fear him having the codes to the nuclear. Yeah, but that's not an impeachable offense, being crazy. Uh, we're talking 25th Amendment. Well, and what's the 25th Amendment? The 25th Amendment is he's not fit to serve. Oh. And there's been a congressman introduced a bill to have him have a psych eval by some psychiatrist. And who and who's going to pick the psychiatrist? That's the question, you know. Well, con- well pro- pro- probably Mueller. Congress. <laughs> I, I, I just think Mueller. that the greatest, the greatest, the greatest uh, way blow to him, the, and the greatest thing we can do to throw a blow at him is to just not talk about him, just to not give him a microphone, not give him a place to speak. You know, he can go out and do all these rallies he wants to. That's like, uh, in this particular case, that was like 15,000 people were there, right? It wasn't a full house, we, by the way. 20,000 was a full house. We, we did that for 10 years when he was a birther, and that didn't work. Uh, uh, about, he still came to the top. John, did you want to say oh, something? No, 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 I wasn't. I was just saying, I was just uh, six of one half, and you know, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yes, uh, Mike. Best way to keep Trump shut up, keep the mic off. Let him scream. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, Patrick. Keep the mic off. Patrick? I, when I was listening to Amy Lennon, I'd have to say, uh, not, you said you wanted to choke her. I wanted to give her a hug and kiss her on the forehead and tell her that's cute. Because <laughs> it, 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 it's a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream beyond pipe dreams, and the the more realistic thing that's going to happen before he would ever get impeached is he would just quit. And I can see him as a quitter if it gets to that point where it looked like it could be impeached. He's going to quit before because he doesn't want to be a loser, and then he can go out and bitch about it and say, see, they forced me out of office, but I won, you know, whatever. But the whole, when it, when she said Nancy Pelosi, I was laughing, and I just wanted to hug her, and like I said, kiss her on the forehead and tell her that's pretty cute. And <laughs> tap her on the head. Yeah. The, uh, actually, uh, yeah. Actually, if if the Democrats take the Senate in 2018 yeah. and put in, does it necessarily mean that Pelosi is the is is the you know or well, it's the House. Well, it's the Speaker of the House. She's the House person, right? So, it, uh, whatever. Well, whoever would be the the her in line of the president, that doesn't mean. I mean, they 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 still have to vote in a new, you know, head of that. Well, and what would it could be Pence? Elizabeth Warren for all we know. Yeah. What would happen to Pence? He's still her. the Vice President. First, well, how, how how would they get? How did we get to Pelosi? You have to, you have to bypass the Veep. And yeah. and Paul Ryan. And Paul Ryan. Hey, Ron, did you hear about the? Did you hear about the Pence email today from Rum? No. He was told back in, I believe, uh, in the fall, I believe it was October, that Flynn was a was a was a Russian was a foreign agent, and he said all the way up what in January that he didn't know that or February. So they got an email. They finally hacked an email or a letter that he was warned uh, ahead of time. The stuff that he just said Flynn lied to him about, he knew about back in October. In October. So, October. Yeah. Well, look, uh, uh, I I just so he, think he's a liar I, too, so. I, I you know I I listened to as I say what Patrick heard last night, and I was I was just going, oh come on, you know, Let, let's spend our lives in more productive uh, uh, things than having this these wishful dreams. Yes, Patrick. Well, Rob, the, the way that it would get to Pelosi is the assumption was. He, would take care of Trump as well as Pence. And then the next one down the line, once the Democrats took over the Senate and the House, that um, uh, Ryan would no longer be Speaker. And then it would be Pelosi. And that's how she would be next in line. So, I mean, it's just a pipe dream. And, you know, I got a better chance of walking then can't get yeah. you know yeah. i mean give me a fucking break uh, jack bishop has joined us who does the intersection in about six minutes but you felt compelled to call 
Just here for a quick statement. Patrick, you're a better man than I am if you wanted to give her a little hug and a kiss on the forehead. Last night I wanted to kick her right in the ass, but I got a bad leg. I couldn't get it up that high. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I have to kiss her, sir. <laughs> well, you know, the bottom line on all of this is that uh, you can just you can spend your time in more fruitful uh, pursuits than this wishful thinking about how we're going to impeach Donald Trump. Um, to begin with, I, I, I was just thinking about this. I think here's what I'm going to put my money on, that he will quit about three years in in order to give Pence the presidency for a year so that when he then runs for president, he has an edge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes sense to me. Helps for being loyal. Yeah. Very, it'll be very uh, slim chance he can win it. Well, if, if things are not going good for Donald Trump in this respect, financially. Mar-a-Lago is doing bad business lately. <laughs> yeah, People yeah, are dropping out of holding their conventions at Mar-a-Lago, their vacations at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, it's like they've, they've just, uh, they've just d decided we don't want to give money to this fucking asshole. Uh, Did you hear also, oh, what? I'm sorry. What'd you say? Did you hear that also Trump said, quote unquote, I'm going to close the government down. I go, good, close the government down. Goodbye, you're out of office. Well, no, he, no, he didn't, won't be out of office. He means closing it down and that he's going to bring it to a standstill. Uh, yeah, he's going to not he he won't no, approve he the budget. He, won't he, he, he cannot do it. He won't sign the budget. We won't sign the budget. Every every proclamation he makes is the kind of proclamation a baby would make, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like I never I'm had take kids. Take my football and go home. I never had kids, but I know enough from watching other people's kids that the bad parent is the one who has a kid that cries all the time when he wants something. Yep. You know, because they've because what they've done is every time the kid cries, they pacify him, and so he knows that that's the way to get his his uh, his way and in the case of Trump here's a guy who grew up knowing the best way to get his way was to cry a lot and people Great. then paid attention to him they gave him TV shows uh, they let him build hotels and now he's a president and he's using that same technique to try and get what he wants and we pay attention to him and we give him the microphone day in and day out we should get put him in I, I call it Operation Radio Silence, you know, it where we just president. don't put them on the air. Remember this now. It was the media who actually put him or helped get him in office yeah. because after the pussy grabbing thing, yeah. they did not exploit it as much as they could have. Right. So they're reaping what they've sown. Quickly, let, uh, let Jack say what he has to say because he's got a show to do. I got to go, but uh, we have a new chant on the intersection commit him commit him commit him yeah, see that i believe in i really believe the man is i think i think i think the best news today was the, uh, the quote it was yesterday actually the quotes out of hillary clinton's book yeah. uh <laughs> where she uh talks about <laughs> the fact the that one well, though that she really wanted to say back off creep but she didn't because she was, everybody told her, don't ever lose your cool and whatever. So she didn't lose her cool. But that would have been a great political moment if she had told Donald Trump to back Same off. Same with Creed. that uh, Saturday Night Live skit when he was standing in the background with the Jaws music going yeah. behind him. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, they were running that. Yeah. Well, listen, the theme is going, and you're right, uh, Tim. Uh, it was a night where everybody got to speak up because somebody wasn't constantly talking. Uh, I, mean, let's I, I still like Phil, though. Oh, I, lo I love <laughs> Phil. Phil, you know, in spite of uh, Phil being Phil, I like Casey, Phil. Casey's listening right now. You know, I, I still don't believe a word that comes out of his mouth. Or 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 the Thank shit. You. I don't believe the shit that comes out of his ass. Okay? <laughs> anyway. So, I, 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 so the two points to remember is radio silence. And Phil was gone. That's there right. Go. That's right. Uh, thank you very much, Rob, once again. Of course, now we got the microphone problem solved, Patrick. How about that? You sound great now. And then all you have to do is just keep that thing up there and move it back and forth. If you see it going too low, you bring it up again. 
Hey, uh, uh, to you, uh, Jeff, always good having you there. You look so so swanky with that sweater around your... Uh, your uh, I have to stay warm around here. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Mike, thank you. Uh, uh, Kevin, great having you here tonight. And, and John, it's been too long. And and give me a call. We got to we gotta have... Uh, we gotta have yeah, some we gotta do. Here. We gotta do brunch. <laughs> gotta do. That's brunch. what you do. That's what you do in, we, in New York. We live too close to each other. We gotta do that. Thank you, everybody. Wave bye bye. Okay, bye-bye. there they go, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're gonna hang up on them now. And we're also, you know, they always, always put up a thing on Skype that says, "How would you rate the overall quality of the video call?" Oh, I will say excellent tonight. Okay, all right. Anyway. That's it for tonight. You know who's next. It's the intersection with Jack and Amy. And then uh, uh, at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, yes, of course, it's uh, the the um, uh, Connections. I won't forget the name of the show. How can I do that? I'm Alex Ben. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.